112 kilometers. Four days and three nights. Eighteen world-renowned business schools to carry out a challenge race in China's northwestern Gobi Desert. Win or lose, continue or quit. All in this edition of China Untapped. The local people, the local people say that uh, in the desert, if you can see rain, that you're really lucky. So, uh, looks like we've got a, a bit of good luck streak uh, following us here along the desert. So, let's get this packed up and uh, move on with the rest of our day. More than 1,400 years ago, a Buddhist monk named Shranzong came through this very part of the Gobi Desert on his journey to find the Buddhist mantras. Today, a large group of people have come here not only to challenge themselves physically, but also to travel the same road that Shranzong traveled on his journey. I'm Mike Beckers, and welcome to this edition of China Untapped. It's the first day of the sixth annual Gobi Challenge, with 700 students from 18 business schools. Over the next four days, the contestants will trek through over 100 kilometers of the Gobi Desert. Among them is the China Europe International Business School, known as SEBS, the former champion for the past two years. To SEBS, this year's goal is three consecutive championships. This is the delegation of SEEBS with 10 competitors. According to the rules, none of them can be previous participants of the competition. Here we are at the Gobi Desert at the Road of Shenzong competition. Today is the first day and you can feel the excitement in the air. It's amazing. All of the competitors are just excited, full of passion. And today is the testing day, the first day. They're going to be traveling about 30 kilometers, just checking out their equipment and getting a feel for the road. So let's keep an eye on all of the competitors and see how things go. For most of the contestants, the testing day provides a chance to warm up and to get to know the Gobi Desert. But no one realizes that it can turn out to be the hardest day along the journey. Crossing the Gobi Desert has been a challenge for centuries. The real-life monk Xuanzang, the hero of the Chinese literary classic Journey to the West, did it 1,400 years ago. He spent five days walking through the desert alone during his 17-year journey to India and back. To memorialize this great Chinese adventurer, since 2006, a group of business schools have come to relive the trek with this competition. The competition was named the Road of Shenzhen, Gobi Challenge. 
Dunhuang was selected as the gathering post, which is a remote place in China's northwestern Gansu province. This was the place where Xuanzang walked through the desert and had a narrow escape from death. Just like Xuanzang faced some 1400 years ago, blowing wind and dust became the strongest rival along the way. Okay, so we're here at the rest area and we can get some water. I've uh, got uh, different energy drinks here that have been sponsored by different companies. Um, we've got these uh, small little cherry tomatoes, and we can get some cucumbers, anything that can kind of get our energy back, get our vitamins going. But uh, the thing is, most of these athletes, they only have less than one minute here at the rest area. So really, it's not even considered a rest before they move on to their next leg of the race. So let's go and talk to some and see what we can do. Huh? The checkpoints are the only place where contestants can replenish their water supply. For many players, it was difficult to decide how much water they should carry with them along the race. More water means a heavier burden, but less water sometimes leads to a dangerous situation. The first day's race ends here, and it is also the campsite for everyone's first night in the Gobi Desert. Here at the end of the day now, and this is the end point for the competitors, and as you can see, they're coming in one by one. And if you look over here, we've got all of the luggage and the equipment for tonight, um, hundreds of bags and, and, and suitcases. And if you look over here, this is where we're going to be spending the night tonight. There'll be hundreds of tents here with people sleeping. And as you can see, the weather is really not all that great. We've had a lot of wind, maybe some threats with rain. So we just hope it's not going to rain tonight because everyone's really tired and needs a good night's sleep. Lucky for us, the rain didn't come. While just a few minutes later, we experienced the strongest sandstorm of our life. This is a video clip filmed by a reporter, which shows the fierce sandstorm attacking the campsite. The wind was blowing as fast as 20 meters per second, and many people's tents were blown away in the storm. The first day in the Gobi Desert, this is the first lesson we've received from the Gobi Desert. on the second day of the race. Let's see what we'll find in the medical tent. And will we face another sandstorm? Can we make it? Stay tuned. It's day two and also the first day of the official race. The course today is approximately 32 kilometers. For many contestants, the real challenge starts today. A team of 10 competitors has been sent by each school to take part in the Gobi Challenge. But this competition is different from others here in the Gobi. The final score for each team is not determined by the first competitor, but by the sixth. By using this method of scoring, the competitors are encouraged to run and work as a team throughout the race. Seeds also hides a special strategy, and today we'll see just what that is. Now, 
超过了一个小时，还不如全部用用男的呃选手。但是呢，我们做了一个咳咳调整，有两名男队员带一个女队员，跟着紧随其后，看着这个赛场的情情况变化，随时做出调整，这样保证我们第六名的成绩。如果女女选手的成绩最好的话，就用女选手成绩；如果女选手成绩不够好的话，还是用第六名男选手的成绩。A special rule here in the Gobi Challenge, the final score for each team is not determined by the finishing time of the first contestant, but by the time of the sixth. Thus, meaning the fastest one isn't the hero in this case. Even the last contestant receives a piece of the glory. Teamwork plays a vital role here in the Gobi Desert. This is Liu Gongcheng, an ancient city that dates back thousands of years. Liu Gongcheng is the finish line for today's race and also this evening's campsite. All right, what we're looking at here are the ancient remains of an old city that used to be here called Liu Gongcheng. It's now in ruins, but it's a great place to come and experience the history and culture. Right behind me, you can see some of the contestants from today's race. They're sitting behind the wall here, just trying to get out of the sun and the wind, trying to catch some rest. And our camp is right behind us. So let's go back and talk to some of the competitors and see how today's race went.